This is a reading of the book by Tex Mars, DNA Science and the Jewish Bloodline. I'm not affiliated with his ministry in any way, but I'm just sharing a few chapters from this book that I feel is excellent and especially valuable information for the times we are living in and for an understanding of the events occurring in the Holy Land. This book also lends insight into the synagogue of Satan and the biblical warnings of those who are not Jews but call themselves Jews. This book is available on Amazon. I recommend it highly and there's so much more in his book. This is only a portion of what he shares. I pray that it blesses you and fills you with understanding and a knowledge of how to pray and what to pray for in these times. God bless you and Shalom. Introduction Definitive DNA studies have now been conducted and the results are clear and indisputable. The people who today call themselves Jews and reside both in the Middle East and around the world are not descendants of the ancient Israelites. They are not the seed of Abraham and have no blood connection to the prophets of ancient Israel. Instead, DNA shows these people to be descendants of the kingdom of Khazaria, a country that formerly existed in the Caucasus, south of Russia. History records that in the 8th century, the king of Khazaria chose Judaism as the preferred religion for his people, who at that time were pagans and nativists. He ordered that Jewish rabbis be brought into Khazaria from Babylon to teach his people of this new religion. The people of Khazaria were conquered over the next two centuries by Russian invaders. Many fled to Eastern Europe, principally to Poland, where they retained their Judaic religion. From there, they emigrated throughout Europe and into the United States. And in 1948, the Khazarian Jews established the new nation of Israel. Those people throughout the world who today refer to themselves as Jews are actually Khazarians and of Turkish Mongol stock. They erroneously believe themselves to be ancient Israelites, but in fact are Gentiles. Many practice the religion of Judaism, and their Babylonian Talmud claims that the Jews are a superior, godlike race. Ironically, the Talmud states that the Gentiles are inferior, being no more than cattle, the Goyim. The Talmud also speaks of Israel as being the eternal homeland for the Jews and of a Jewish Messiah to come and rule the world. The persistence of the Khazarians to insist they are Jews and their Talmudic doctrines have resulted in conflict and division wherever they have resided. This is especially true in Israel, a land where native-born Palestinians, most of whom are Muslims, also have territorial claims. Paul, in the New Testament, told us to beware of those who emphasize race and national origins. He spoke of foolish genealogies. God's children, however, are born again in spirit and in truth. God surely confounds those who are the children of pride, who hold that their race and blood is superior to that of their fellow human beings. That is clearly why he has surprised us with his mathematical certainty through DNA signs that, in fact, almost all of the Jews today in the world are Khazars. They are not the seed of Abraham nor his physical heirs. They have no physical or family ties with Abraham and the prophets. 
This seems at first glance to be a tragedy for the Jews, whose human pride is damaged at the revelation that they are not God's chosen and not so special after all. It also sends the whole world a clear signal that the land of Israel does not belong to the hyphen Jews, for they are Hazars, and their national homeland is not Israel, but Hazaria in the Caucasus. But what at first seems bad news, even a disaster for the Khazar Jew, becomes in fact a marvelous opportunity. Now the Jew is free from the burden to create an Israeli homeland. He can bid farewell to his exclusion from the rest of humanity and thereby rejoin the human race. God's word shows the way to life through faith in Jesus Christ. My prayer is that Christians will avail themselves of this opportunity to bless the Khazars and to witness to them of the love of Jesus. For only in this way can the Khazar truly be free and know liberty, as is recorded in the scriptures in Galatians 3, 26 to 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Tex Mars, Austin, Texas. Chapter 1 And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Genesis twelve seven. There is absolutely no doubt that God made a covenant with Abraham. Under this covenant, Abram and his seed were promised a great swath of land we today call Israel, but also partially encompassing land in the current nations of Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, and Iraq. We can call this territory Greater Israel. This covenant was confirmed by God when he led the Jews out of the land of Egypt. That is when he again promised them the land of Israel, and he kept his promise. The great controversy, however, involves the question of whether or not this covenant is still operative and in place today. My own view is that it is not. God surely made this covenant and he kept his end of the bargain. Unfortunately, Israel did not. They abrogated, terminated the covenant by their sin and evil conduct. A new and better covenant. This voiding of the old covenant is recorded in the New Testament's book of Hebrews, in which the Apostle Paul explains that Jesus is the mediator of a new and better covenant. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much he also is mediator of a better covenant, which can be established, which can be established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then there should no place have been sought for the second. In that he said, a new covenant he had made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 8, 6-7 and 13. The new and better covenant is deposited and is alive in Jesus Christ, and it is offered to all the nations through faith. See Hebrews 11. Thus, the people of faith, Jew and Gentile, seek not a holy city here on earth, but a heavenly one. 
That is the wonderful promise of God to his chosen people, Christians who have faith. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Hebrews 11.16 Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all the patriarchs, prophets, and saints, having been saved, not by the law, but by their faith in God and his Son, are now in heaven. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. That is the glory promise, the heavenly city of Jerusalem that awaits all people of faith, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, Jews and Gentiles in the new covenant. Therefore, a remnant of Jews shall be saved, we are told, and they shall become one with the saints of God. For Abraham's seed is one, Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.16 Not the many of the physical state of Israel. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3.29 The good news, then, is that it does not matter what your race or national origin is. Faith is inclusive. All may come through faith. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 26-28 Thus God's kingdom is made up of all races and national origins. He is a God of love. He is not a racist but instead loves all and wants people everywhere to believe in his son and be saved. Christian Zionists continue to profess the old covenant. Yet there is a contingent in Christianity who reject these clear principles. They have separated one people, one nation from the rest and proclaim that nation and that only as God's chosen. Yes, this contingent claims that God never abrogated the old covenant. They say that the Jews remain God's eternal people. Now, there are many in this contingent so extreme in their views that the Jews become like little gods. The old covenant, they say, still applies and the jews they maintain do not need jesus for salvation they need only to obey the 613 laws of judaism the halakha this two covenant belief is today spreading like wildfire especially among those who proclaim themselves to be christian zionists Whatever view the Christian Zionist takes toward Israel, it is for certain that every Christian Zionist essentially believes that 1. God has separated the Jews and the Christians. 2. God has a separate plan for the Jews. And 3. God desires that every Jew return to Israel. Some Christian Zionists the Messianics actually have synagogues. They have men called rabbis who lead the assemblies. They observe the festivals of Judaism and they obey many of the laws of Judaism. Only Jews possess the land? The major abiding principle of the Christian Zionists, the Bible calls them Judaizers, is the insistence that the land of Israel in the Middle East belongs only 
to the Jews. Since the Abrahamic covenant is still operative in their view, then the seed of Abraham has title to the land. This land principle is a vital part of the Christian Zionist belief system, and their political power ensures that the Jews in Israel today not only possess much of the land, but are annually given billions of dollars in foreign aid by the U.S. Over the years, some two trillion has been given to the nation of Israel, plus billions of dollars in military armaments. According to the Christian Zionists, this support of Israel and the Jews is a mandatory requirement of God. Those who bless Israel will be blessed, and those who do not are cursed by their firm even fanatical support of Israel, the Zionist believes he is doing God's will. What this book covers. In this book, we first examine the DNA signs which now reveals to all who are the Jews of Israel and the world. Only the descendants of Abraham, bloodline Jews, say the Christian Zionists, are entitled to chosen status and to the land first promised their ancient father, Abraham, some 5,000 years ago. Are the modern-day Jews the descendants of Abraham? Are they his seed? DNA science gives us the answer, and history and archaeology provides strong support. We will also examine the scriptural basis of the Christian Zionist contingent and determine the authenticity of their claims. It is true that the Old Testament promised Abraham and his seed the land, but what does the New Testament say? Was God's promise actually fulfilled? Finally, we will take a look at Chazaria, the mysterious yet real nation of the Caucasus, Southern Russia. Is this once great nation the origin of today's Jews? Are the Jews of Israel and the diaspora authentic, pure, racial Jews of the bloodline of their Israelite ancestors? Or are they imposters? Chapter 2 the evidence is clear. Today's Jews are Khazars. This new study, Al Haik, the missing link of Jewish European ancestry, contrasting the Rhineland and Khazarian hypotheses, Genome Biology and Evolution, December 2012, supports the theory that the Jews are descendants of different peoples who converted to Judaism. The dominant element in the genetic makeup is Chazar, the Jewish people's ultimate treasure hunt, Haaretz newspaper, page 1 to 15. Are you a Christian Zionist? Do you believe that the people of Israel, the Jews, are eternally God's chosen people? Do you believe, moreover, that God wants all the Jews in the world to return to the nation of Israel and make their residence. That God gave the land only to the Jews through their father Abraham. That it is their land forever. Do you believe too that all who bless the Jews will be blessed by God and those who curse the Jews will be cursed by God? As a Christian Zionist, do you believe that today's Jews are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That they are the very seed of Abraham? If you believe these things, then this book is definitely for you. You need to know about DNA science and its relationship to the Jewish bloodline because it is this science that can confirm for you who are the Jews and who are not Jews? Why is this important to you? 
Well, if a man comes up to you and says, I am a Jew, how do you know he's telling the truth? What if he tells you, I'm a Jew and I want to go to Israel? What if this man then says, the land of Israel belongs to me and to my race, but another people, the Palestinians, are now living in my home in Israel. Please help me take back my home. Would you do it? Would you help him? Surely you would want first to know if he is who he says he is, that he's really a Jew. If he's not a Jew, he doesn't get the land, does he? And if he's a racial imposter, then he does not deserve your support, right? If the man is actually, say, a Japanese, Chinese, or African, you would legitimately say, hey, you're not a Jew, you're an imposter. Get out of here. I just need to interject here because the author later shares findings of DNA tests that reveal ethnic Jews from both Africa and India. So there are Africans who are in fact genuine Jews with Israelite blood. Certainly no one would blame you for denying the man your help, your support, if he really were not a Jew. The point is, Christian Zionists believe that Israel is only for real Jews, descendants of Abraham, Jews of the bloodline of Abraham, Jews who are of the 12 tribes mentioned in the book of Revelation. You know that this Japanese or Chinese or African does not look like a Jew, but can you be sure he's not what he claims? The question is, how can you know for sure whether the man is or is not a Jew? DNA science provides irrefutable evidence well, the very best method of determining one's race is to test their DNA. In 1968, British scientists Crick and Watson scientifically established that every human being has DNA traits that identify exactly their origins. It's simple. And DNA is virtually 100% scientifically accurate. No question about it. Since DNA became available, hundreds of thousands of people around the world have been tested. The courts use DNA all the time to either catch a criminal or perhaps to exonerate the innocent. Without DNA, many criminal cases would never be solved. DNA is also used to establish who is the birth father or mother of a newborn baby or an adult. It is useful in civil courts across the globe to affix birth and adjudge cases. Thanks to DNA, scientists and other researchers are now able to determine the race, tribe, or ethnic group to which a person or even an entire nation belongs. In fact, this is the proper use of DNA in the case we are now discussing, that of the man claiming to be Jewish. Simply test the man's DNA, and you can definitely tell if he is a Jew or is an imposter. Of course, there are other ways to check a person's race and ethnic group, but none except DNA are perfect. Many people claim to be what they are not due to advantage. It often pays to be a Native American, a Black, a Mexican, or another race. So you test the individual's DNA and the results come back. No, the man is not a Jew. He is surprise, a Samoan, a Fiji Islander, or of some other race, but he's definitely not a Jew. 
He's not of Israelite stock. He is not the seed of Abraham. And he has no right to settle in Israel. Nor does he, as an imposter, have a right to the land. After all, as a Christian Zionist, you believe, do you not, that Israel is only for the Jews. God gave their father, Abraham, the title to the land over 5,000 years ago. Are the people living in Israel today genetic Jews? Now, keeping these facts in mind, how do you know if the people who now live in Israel are in fact really Jews? It has only been since 1948 that Israel has been an independent nation. How do you know if the people who live there are descendants of Abraham, his seed? It is important for Christian Zionists to know whether people come from the true and legitimate Jewish bloodline. For that matter, what of the Jews here in America? How do you really know they are Jews? Do you simply trust what they say they are? Don't you wish you had someone who could give all the Jews in the world a DNA test? After all, it is certainly not right for Christian Zionists to give fakes and imposters things that God intends only for Jews, right? DNA tests tell the story. Well, good news. DNA tests have essentially already been conducted on those who say they are Jews. The results are in. Are you ready to discover now what modern DNA science has to say about the people who claim to be God's chosen? Scientific DNA studies were conducted first in 2001 by Dr. Ariella Oppenheim, a Jewish genetics researcher of Hebrew University in Tel Aviv. Her finding Almost all who today identify themselves as Jews are not the descendants of Abraham, but are in fact of Turkish Mongol stock. The Jews are Khazarians, not Israelites. Then in 2012, Dr. Iran El Haik, an Israeli born Jewish researcher from prestigious Johns Hopkins Medical University in Baltimore, Maryland, published his findings. They confirm those of Oppenheim. Those who today identify themselves as Jews are not the descendants of Abraham, but are in fact of Turkish Mongol stock. The Jews are Hazarians, not Israelites. According to Dr. El Hayek's research, those who identify themselves as today's Jew and as descendants, therefore, of Abraham, are mistaken. They actually can be traced back to Hazaria. There, in the 8th century, the people of Hazaria converted to Judaism. As reporter Ofa Adarat states in Israel's newspaper, Haaretz, the Khazars converted to Judaism in the 8th century, and their descendants are the European or Ashkenazi Jews who live today in Israel and the diaspora. The commonly accepted narrative consider the Jews to be descended from the residents of the kingdom of Judah, who were exiled and returned to their native land, the modern-day state of Israel. Only after thousands of years of exile. In contrast, this new study, El Haik, the missing link of Jewish European ancestry contrasting the Rhineland and Khazarian hypothesis, genome biology and evolution, December 2012, supports the theory that the Jews are descendants of different peoples who converted. To Judaism. The dominant element in the genetic makeup 
is Chazar, the Jewish people's ultimate treasure hunt, Haaretz newspaper, page 1 to 15. Hazars, not family related to Jews or Israel. The Hazarians at that time had absolutely no family relationship with the Jews or with Israel. They were pagans into nature and phallus worship, but their king called Kagan Bulan decided his entire country of Hazaria would convert to Judaism and many Hazarians became Jews through conversion. It is, of course, one thing for the Khazarian people to become Jews and to learn and practice the religion of Judaism. It is, however, quite another for a people to be descendants of the bloodline of Abraham. Moreover, these new converts had never set foot in Israel, which at that time was under the heel of the Muslims. Within a few hundred years, Hazaria, which at one time had been the largest state in either Asia or Europe, had been defeated by Russian forces. Hazaria fell under the domination of the Russians. Many Hazarians left and emigrated eastward into Poland and Lithuania. There, the Hazars settled as Jews and kept their adopted religion, Judaism. Over time, the Khazars drifted on into other European nations, into Romania, Austria, France, and Germany, etc. Most forgot where they had originally come from, and even that they were Khazars. They simply knew that they were Jews and identified themselves as Jews. More on the Khazars and their once great nation of Khazaria, later in this book. But for now, I would like to reiterate the fact that these Khazars call themselves Jews and over time most forgot their origins. Some of these supposed Jews, actually Khazars, finally emigrated from Europe to America beginning about 1890 and on into the 1920s. Then, in the years after World War II, many Khazar Jews left Europe and sought refuge in Palestine, which became Israel in 1948. Today, demographers report that there are approximately 7.5 million who identify as Jews in the USA. In Israel, we find another 7.5 7.5 million, and there are some 3 million Jews in Europe and elsewhere in the world. The vast majority of these 18 million Jews are Khazars, as the DNA research of El Haik, Oppenheim, and others document. Nowhere in all the world has there been found a man or woman who can say with veracity. I am of the same race as my father, Abraham. Let me repeat, nowhere is there a human being alive who can prove he or she is authentic, DNA proven Israelite, a descendant of Abraham. There is no such thing anywhere in the world as a race of Jews. Even the Encyclopedia Judaica acknowledges this fact. Today, it's not possible to find someone of pure Israelite DNA. Only traces of this DNA has been found in Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews. And by that, I also include the African and the Indian Jews. No Jewish exile. It was taught by Christians that the majority of Jews driven from Jerusalem by Roman general Titus in 70 AD had emigrated to Rome and to Europe, particularly Germany, and then on to Eastern Europe. The theory was that the Jews who resided and then became the diaspora in Europe were Middle East exiles. 
But historians and archaeologists disputed this account. Most said that after Titus, only a few of the Jews were dispersed throughout the Roman world. They intermarried with the local peoples and essentially were dissolved as a homogenous race. However, most of the Jews remained in the Middle East, grouping themselves in Babylon and other locales in close-knit communities, cleaving together under their rabbis and continuing their practice of Judaism. The Jewish leaders hotly disputed the accounts of historians and archaeologists. They insisted that the Jews, being Middle East exiles, had settled first in Europe as Jews, then finally emigrated elsewhere. It was essential for the rabbis and other Jewish leaders to maintain this fiction. With this myth, they could maintain that they were indeed descendants of Abraham, his seed, and had retained their bloodline. Myth of a Pure Race With this Jewish myth of Middle East origin intact, the Jews could proclaim themselves to be a pure race. They could continue their claim to the land God had given Abraham in Genesis. The Jews could also trumpet they would eventually return to Israel, that it was an eternal possession of the Jews, that as his chosen people, God had given them the title through Abraham. Next year, Jerusalem became the rallying cry for the people who called themselves Jews. But if these people had only been Jews since the 8th century, if they had converted to Judaism, pressed to do so by their king Bulan, if indeed the kings were Hazarians and not Israelites, everything changes. In that case, the Jews had no legitimate claim on the land of Israel. They had no Israelite ancestors. Indeed, the ancestors of the Hazarians had never been in Israel, never set foot on holy soil. The Hazar Jews were taught their Judaic religion by rabbis exported by King Bulan from nearby Babylon, beginning in the 8th century. All they knew of Israel had been told to them. The Hazars could not return to Israel. As Hazars, it was impossible for the Jews to return to Israel, a place they and their ancestors had never been. Their genetic roots were in the Caucasus, in what became southern Russia, and the people of Khazaria were mainly of Turkish stock. They had no blood or family ties to Israel. Thus the claim to Jewish extraction was a hollow claim. It was as if a group of Japanese laid claim to being originally from South America and declared that Rio de Janeiro and Brazil was their eternal possession. In that case, the indigenous people of Rio de Janeiro and Brazil would be quite upset if in 1948 the Japanese emigrated en masse and set up a new nation. If then, the Brazilians were uprooted from their homes, businesses, farms, killed and persecuted by the Japanese contingent, would not there be fierce resistance? Would you allow an outside group with no real connection to your homeland to come in and seize your property, claiming it as their possession because they say, God gave it to their ancestors 5,000 years ago. Plight of the Palestinians In this perspective, we can well understand the argument and plight of the native Palestinians. They were the majority, and they had lived in their homeland for centuries, building homes, planting orchards, and setting up shops and businesses. They generally had lived in peace, owning no firearms, no weapons, and having no military to protect them from attack. 
Suddenly, in 1900, the Jews, Khazars, began to descend on their peaceful territory, claiming title to what was clearly the territories of the Palestinians. The outside force of Khazar Jews naturally met resistance. This especially being true because most of the native-born Palestinians were Muslims, whereas the invaders, the Khazar Jews, claimed to be Judaic. We see already in the United States the ongoing bitterness and conflict caused in the recent past by the arrival of Muslim immigrants into our country, applied to Palestine. We can multiply this anger and resentment in Palestine. The Jews, believing themselves an entitled super race, not only began to discriminate against and persecute the indigenous people, Muslim Palestinians, but made clear that they, the Palestinians, were their inferiors. The arriving Jews, actually Khazars, made the new nation of Palestine, or Israel, a Jewish state. They passed laws forbidding Palestinians the right to vote and the right to own land. And they discriminated against them in many other aspects as well. For those Palestinians who had fled the Israeli invasion in 1948, things were particularly brutal and harsh. The Jews legislated that the Palestinian natives could not return to their homeland. Thus, they became permanent outcasts, forced to survive in primitive tent communities in the hostile desert. This kind of treatment must, of necessity, breed resentment and stir up anger in the hearts of those affected. Dear Christian, put yourselves in the Palestinians' shoes. Would you also, if these things happen to you here in the United States, be bitter? Would you not seek recompense for all the indignities heaped on you and for the stealing of your property? It is not only the Palestinian Muslims who have suffered Many of the native-born Palestinians are Christian. These Christians also have been uprooted and have become objects of hate and discrimination by the Jews. The crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is that Hazar people, who are not blood Jews, wanted the land of Israel for their possession, and thanks to Americans, they have seized and now are using brutal methods to control the native bond Palestinians. Is this okay with Christians? Is the title of Israel the right of converted Jews, really Gentiles, who are not the descendants of Abraham? That is the question. And if anyone can convert to Judaism, does that conversion mean that presto, the convert immediately has the Abrahamic covenant? Celebrities and movie stars become Jews. Marilyn Monroe, Sammy Davis Jr. They were Gentiles who converted to Judaism. Are you, Zionist Christian, willing to say that these Hollywood types thereby owned the title to Israel and were entitled to the promise of Abraham. In recent years, the following celebrities, movie and TV stars, politicians, newsmen, etc. prove their Jewishness by study of the Jewish Kabbalah. Most were born Gentile. They wear the red wristband, signifying they are believers in the Kabbalah. They recited the Ona Bakash and the Bon Parat Jewish prayers. Are these people entitled to all the promises given Father Abraham? Is the title to the land of Israel given to converts? Or is it reserved strictly for the seed 
of Abraham. Here is a list of celebrities who converted to Judaism. Nicole Richie, Paris Hilton, Bill Clinton, Britney Spears, Mick Jagger, Madonna, Posh Beckham, Stephen Colbert, John Kerry, Zac Efron, Billy Piper, Lindsay Lohan, Terry Hatcher, Brian Williams, Demi Moore. A colossal hoax. If it is the seed of Abraham, the Jewish bloodline, that has the promise, then neither these people nor the whole Jewish world, including almost the entire nation of Israel, are qualified to own the land of Israel. If God chooses his people by race, then virtually every Jew living in the world is unchosen. They are imposters, fake Jews. And that is proven by DNA science. What a colossal hoax has been perpetrated on Christian Zionists. You who are Christian Zionists have supported Israel all these years and given up your precious time and money. You have worked politically to restore the Jewish nation. By your efforts, the people of Israel have flourished and prospered. And now you discover that the people whom you have supported all this time are not even blood Jews. They are Khazars. They have no ties with Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. They are not the seed. They have no claim to the land. What do you do now, Christian Zionist? Khazars sought claim to Palestine. James Dean, intelligent analyst and military author, in his article, Zionist Design, Myth of Jewish Genome to Usurp Palestine, March 13, 2013, believes the so-called Jews from Hazaria perpetrated the fraud to support the bogus claim to Palestine, which was anchored in their being a separate people. He writes, this distinguished them from all others because they claimed a land title in their blood. They bet the farm on this DNA proof of purchase, a God-given, coded passport to the Palestine. Dr. Elhaik erased the barcode because it was never in the blood. On December 14, 2012, Dr. Iran Elhaik turned almost two generations of Jewish genome research upside down, says Dean. But he went even further. The young Israeli-American geneticist has charged former researchers with academic fraud, and he has the research to back it up. According to Dean, Jewish Chazar researchers hoaxed previous results to support their false blood claim to Palestine. But from the time that Israel became a state, he writes, you had a bunch of atheist, communist Jews, shoot their way into the land with the sole moral cover that God gave it to us only. But Dean continues, Dr. Elhaik, in an interview with Haaretz, has found that Israel's group of Jews in the world today do not share a common genetic origin. The genome of Jews is a mosaic of ancient peoples and its origin is largely Hazars. The Israel connection is such a tiny part of their Jews' genome that it cancels out their DNA claim to the land, says Dean. Is this not poetic justice from Dr. Elhaik? Dean points out that he brings us scientific proof of there being no biblical Jewish people as such as they have presented themselves. And does this not make a fraud 
of the historical anti-Semitic smear by a people who aren't even Semites. Jemai Kani agrees in an article entitled The Myth of the Jewish People, Gulf Daily News, February 23rd, 2013. He writes, The notion of the Jewish people as a race rather than a religion of various races is without foundation. The results of a recently published study by Israeli-American geneticist Dr. Iran el Haik at John Hopkins Medical University have scientifically validated the Hazar hypothesis. Dr. Shlomo Sand of the University of Tel Aviv, whose seminal book, The Invention of the Jewish People, 2007, went to the top of the bestseller lists in Israel and the U.S., warned that the Jewish myth would soon be exposed. A scholarly volume by Sand presents a plethora of historical and archaeological evidence, and archaeological evidence demonstrating that the Jews are not the seed of Abraham. Instead, the Jews of today are Hazars. As Shlomo Sand, history professor at the University of Tel Aviv, explains it in his outstanding 2007 book, The Invention of the Jewish People Without the Old Testament in Its Hand and the Exile of the Jewish People in Its Memory, Israel would have no justification for annexing Arab Jerusalem and establishing settlements in the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights, and even the Sinai Peninsula. If they were Hazars, the title, the Eternal People, did not apply to them. They would be, in fact, another usurping ethnic conglomerate falsely claiming to be Jews and willing to kill to illegally possess the rightful ancestral lands of the Palestinians. Other books followed, most notably Kevin Brooks' 1999, The Jews of Hazaria. But these many scholarly books never really became the consensus because of Zionist opposition. As Orwell once wrote, Whoever controls history controls the world. Hazars used trickery, deception, murder to obtain the land. The racist nature of this land theft is indicated by these statements made by top Jewish Hazar leaders in regard to their use of trickery, deception, and murder to obtain the land by terror and ethnic cleansing. Certainly, the Hazars have greatly benefited and continue to benefit from these racial myths. Claiming to be true descendants of Abraham, they have cleverly manipulated and used the power of Christian Zionism to forcibly remove the Palestinians from the land. We are simply obeying God, they repeat, over and over. Christian Zionists not only believed the Hazars, but insisted the U.S. government give them all possible support. How could they refuse? They believed they were doing God's work by ensuring that the land promised to the descendants and seed of Abraham became their possession. The Palestinians may have more Israelite blood. What is fascinating is that both Dr. Ariella Oppenheim and Dr. Elhaik, in their DNA research, discovered that a number of Palestinian Muslims, supposedly Gentiles, have at least some connection genetically to the ancient Israelites, 
Some even have a chromosome which indicates they are ancient Cohens. The Cohens were the Jews who, in olden days, attended the synagogue and temple. Dr. Ariella Oppenheim, in her DNA study, states, "We find that Arabs also carry this Cohen chromosome." Oppenheim from Hebrew University and the Hadassah Medical School found that their DNA documents that both the Palestinians and the Jews originate from the Kurds of Iraq and Turkey. Thus, they are Khazars and not descendants of Abraham. Genetic studies, moreover, show that as many as ninety percent of the Palestinians. Have close genetic ties to Jews. Beliefnet. dot com slash news two thousand eleven zero nine. Jews slash Palestinians have close genetic ties. Is the Israel Palestinian conflict much like the U.S. war between the states, simply a case of brother fighting brother? Are the Jews who actually have some Israelite chromosomes in their DNA in opposition to the Palestinians that have the same Israelite DNA? After the Oppenheim DNA findings were published in two thousand one, the editor of the largest daily newspaper in Palestine, a Muslim, challenged the corresponding editor of the largest daily Israel paper. A supposed Jew to a DNA duel, he said. I have more Israelite blood coursing through my veins than you do. The Israelite turned down the challenge and refused to test his blood for DNA. No thanks, he answered. Have Christian Zionists long promoted the wrong people? Mistakenly believing the Hazars to be blood Jews, have these imposters, Hazars, used the Christian support to go out and assault and discriminate against people in Israel who actually are more Jewish than are they? Bluntly stated, are today's Jews in Israel, according to their DNA non-Israelite Hazars? Are they fighting to obtain the land from those, the native-born Palestinians who possess more Israelite DNA than do they? How to make amends? What do Christian Zionists need to do to put things right? If they are correct that only Abraham's seed has the right to the land. God cannot be pleased that non-Israelites, having no blood link to Abraham, have been given title to the land of Israel. Should Christians now reverse themselves, supporting policies that dispossess the Hazar Jews of the land they have grabbed illegally? DNA science is easy to reproduce. For less than fifty dollars per person, we could take DNA samples from every citizen in Israel and Palestine. Only those proven to be true Jews, perhaps one to two percent, would be allowed to stay. The Hazars and others would be told, "You are not of Abraham. You must go. God has given this land." Only to the seed of Abraham. After all, every one of Israel's leaders, their prime ministers, has evidently been a false Jew, a Hazar, from the days of the first prime minister, David Ben Gurion, real name David Grun. All except Benjamin Netanyahu came from Poland. Prime Minister Shimon Peres, also a Pole, is really named. Zimon Persky. Meanwhile, Benjamin Netanyahu, the only one born in Israel, has a father who is also from Poland. Even the Soviet Union's Vladimir Lenin was a Khazar Jew. 
His real name was Vladimir Ulyanov. The second in command in the Kremlin during the early communist era was Leon Trotsky. Real Jewish Khazar name, Lev Bronstein. Karl Marx, too, was of Khazar Jewish origins. So communism was almost exclusively a Khazar Jewish concoction. It should be noted that almost all the Jews, actually Khazars, who came to Israel in 1948 and seized the land belonging to the Palestinians were indeed virulent communists. 98% of their leadership was from Poland, where the Khazars had settled beginning in the 10th century. In Tel Aviv in 1948, they called themselves Little Poland. If DNA were used to judge who gets the land of Israel and who inhabit it, it is estimated that almost all of the current inhabitants would be Palestinians. There are probably more Palestinians with some ancient Israelite blood than there are so-called Jews. This end result would, using the Christian Zionist own standards, be fair and reasonable, or would it? Should we, in fact, use the criterion of who has the most Israelite DNA to ascertain ownership of the land? It seems to me that Christian Zionists should really examine their thinking. The question to be answered is, what is God's criteria for ownership? Are the Israel of God and the Israel of man, two entirely separate and distinct entities? The DNA is authoritative. It seems that only through DNA can the authenticity of Abraham's descendants be authoritatively established. Authoritative DNA studies have already been accomplished. Now the world knows the Bible is absolutely correct. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Revelation 3 9. The results of a matchup between the genetic database of the Kohanim, Jewish men named Kohen, whose Jewish ancestry is supposedly the strongest and best attested, and that of a lost Jewish tribe, the Lemba of Africa, in the country of Namibia. The black Africans have long claimed to be Israelites, but whiter Jews typically laughed and sneered. Guess what? Scientists now say the blacks of the Lemba tribe were right all along. Jews who are Africans and Indians. Already the scientists had discovered that some black Africans are indeed Jews, but also that a community of people in the nation of India are Jewish related according to their DNA. They look like Indians, of course, but they have as much Jewish DNA as do Jewish people living in Israel. They even have more Jewish blood, DNA, 
than do many European Jews. In fact, in one recent scientific study of European Jews, it was found that almost 88% of these people have no Jewish DNA stock whatsoever. It was, however, a prominent Jew named Arthur Kosler, himself a Zionist Jew, who in 1976 published the book which caused such a sensation. The 13th tribe was a literary bombshell. Kosler's accurate work was meant to be a refutation of Hitler and the Nazis, but it had incredible unintended consequences, he wrote. The large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European, thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that there the Jews' ancestors came not from Canaan but from the Caucasus, once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race, and that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun Ulgar and Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. This is just a part of the book written by Tex Mars, DNA Science and the Jewish Bloodline. I am not connected to his ministry or his publishing company in any way. I have only shared a few chapters of his book. There is much more within the volume of the book that is available on Amazon. Please get the book. It's fantastic. I don't profit from the sale in any way. I'm sharing this because I feel it's powerful, valuable information for the times we are living in.